Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to uh, be one of the panelists today on, uh, I think, a, an important area of discussion and really, I would agree, an elegant and important policy statement from the Gordon Commission. I really appreciate even that you personally invited me to come and also that you demonstrate what we've always tried to do, which is show we can leave the competition to the athletics and when it comes to education, it's all involved. So I appreciate it. I also want to thank Marcelo for his generosity in hosting this commission. And truly, I have never had such an elegant uh, introduction. Um, and I also, I think uh, Marcelo had to, oh, there you are, Marcelo, I'm so glad you realized that LA is the place to be, not New York. So <laughs> Um, and as others have stated, there is much of substance to be discussed and learned from and uh, ruminated over uh, from the report. And obviously today there's little time to do justice to it. So given that, what I decided to do for my um, uh, remarks was to carve out one of the recommendations and as the focus of my remarks, and then to uh, give you some examples of how we're trying to implement that and I'm glad I followed your remarks today because I'm going to talk about digital technologies. So I uh, chose recommendation six, which to paraphrase encourages the broadening of assessment uh, assessments to include more obviously than the standardized test, recognizing that digital technologies uh, offer multiple opportunities to assess how students learn as well as what they learn. So currently, the Rossier School faculty, uh, its faculty, staff, and students have two programs that involve powerful uh, technology, powerful digital technologies, uh, and they, they center on our learning management system, which is an example of a technology that both promotes and assesses learning. Uh, the first program I want to talk about is our MAT Online. That's our Master of Arts in Teaching. It is a uh, graduate master's program focused on increasing the pipeline of new teachers well prepared to meet the needs of students, of all students, but particularly students in high need schools. Besides the master's degree, students get a California teaching credential. So our challenge in uh, uh, developing, creating this program uh, was that not only did students have to meet the standards of getting a master's degree, but they also had to meet the standards in, in California <coughs> of the California uh, Commission on Teacher Credentialing. Uh, the program is four years old, and uh, the, I want to just give four characteristics of the program. It's live, it's asynchronous, it's field-based, and it is socially networked. Um, the program has, uh, we also partner with a, a tech company to, uh, to you, and the learning management system is the system that they develop. Among the features, we have, with our, we have hundreds of graduates, you heard in the introduction, we have over 1,500 students in all 50 states and over 40 countries, and not only uh, working with them to meet the, the uh, requirements of the master's degree is that we had to meet the requirements of giving them, of uh, uh, recommending them for a, a, a license. Um, and that proved to be actually the easiest part. The state of California is based on standards in terms of a granting of credential and it isn't tied to the applicant in California in a California school. So we, um, what we have done um, in the development of our novice teachers is to record everything. All sessions are recorded via video and incorporate that, and those uh, uh, sessions, those live sessions, uh, are then uh, archived in, uh, in the asynchronous material that students have access to. Every course in our teacher preparation program, obviously on campus but also online, uh, is taught live via our learning management system using applications like Adobe Connect so that each in-course instructor and his and his or her students see and hear each other in real time for two hours every week. They are, because they are in real time, that means uh, a one o'clock class in California is a four o'clock class in New York and a 
in the afternoon and a four in the morning class for those who are in Shanghai. These sessions are video recorded and archived. And as I said, they then become part of the uh, asynchronous archives that students, faculty can go back to and, and, uh, and review. Now what I want to talk about is uh, funding that we receive from the Gates Foundation to investigate one small part of what we're doing. I mean, it's a big part, but it's uh, a part of its student teaching. And so we uh, were given money to investigate how student teachers use feedback to change their practices during their 20 weeks of student teaching. Now, we have partnered with over 1,200 schools around the country. We, our students are, are assigned to a school near where they physically live. So we have the, the added uh, complexity of working at a distance with uh, master teachers and with our own students. And we use videotape as, uh, to, to, uh, to record what they're doing. During the, 20, uh, during the student teaching, our, student, our teacher candidates submit at least eight teaching episodes to their uh, teacher, uh, teacher, their instructor back uh, in our, on our campus. An episode includes several elements. A written lesson plan, a video of the student teacher planning the lesson with his or her mentor teacher, um, a video of the delivery of that lesson, and a video of the debrief with the cooperating teacher about what happened in that lesson. Uh, we also have artifacts of the assignments that pupils uh, in the student teacher's classrooms have done, as well as formative and summative texts. So we have multiple um, assessments, and, and through video as well as written artifacts. Feedback is given at all points during the episode, so, and again during the faculty review of the episode. So envision, for those of you who are teacher educators, and those of you who went through student teaching, uh, where you would meet as a group and do a seminar and you would talk about what you did. What we have the advantage of is having videos and so we can see if there are eight students in a class who are doing uh, becoming math teachers, we see in the seminar the, the faculty member and the students who are doing the student teaching see each other's videos. So rather than saying what you think you did, and your, your mentor teacher is saying what they thought they saw, we can all see it and we can stop the video and we can talk about it. And we're very, we spend a lot of time, um, have spent a lot of time developing rubrics and getting feedback on what we see. And we wanted to understand how do they incorporate that feedback into the next lesson. And because it's now we have evidence, this is, uh, um, is at the heart of what we're trying to understand here. The, um, the pilot study allows us to observe how the feedback is delivered, that is, are, the, are they using the rubrics that we've uh, identified, and then how is that feedback incorporated into the lesson by the student teacher. And then the results we th of this pilot we think will give us valuable information about the pedagogy and the practice of our own faculty who themselves are having to learn how to use a different means of doing supervision as well as how will it affect the uh, efficacy of a, of a novice teacher when, when he or she gets into her own classroom. The pilot looks at uh, students who, but, but the pilot is looking at students who completed uh, student teaching a year ago because we had to have all of the, 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 uh, the 20 weeks of student teaching, all the episodes, we had to have all of the, the data so we could go through this. So we are, and we will follow up using video to record them as they are now in their own classrooms so that we can note both what they did as that instant teaching and what they're doing in their first seven years of, um, uh, in their own classrooms. We are, but here's the important part, I think, for this recommendation. We're looking at, it is really looking retrospectively. Because in this pilot, we had to make sure we had all the things that we wanted to that we identified that should be there. What we are trying to do is get, in, get to the point of real-time use of this data, these data, to give feedback to our own instructors about what they do and its impact, as well as to the student, to the student teachers. And that is definitely, while digital technology can 
gets you there, it is still the human being, it is still our, you know, uh, as, as instructors and as, as learners ourselves. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a, there are lots of complications there on how this is going to work. Uh, we believe refining this in in, uh, technology-driven feedback loop will lead to stronger teachers, both out in K-12 schools and also in our own classrooms at the university. And clearly we think that will, this will lead to better outcomes, better learning outcomes for students. So I think it's fair to say that the, co the core concepts of analysis of, of teaching practice is really not, a, it's not new. It's not new, obviously, to educators. And there are various examples of pen and paper um, and even videos that do exist on how, how you can uh, use technology to give feedback. I think, what, I think what is new is that digital technology enables us to bring all of these uh, pe uh, pieces of evidence together and, and, and use them um, you know, in, a, in a systematic fashion. And it enables us to record things uh, and include examples of teaching and learning. Again, we hope, I'm not, uh, soon in real time. By, by using the LMS as an assessment tool, our students can review their own learning progress and our instructors can personalize the student teaching experience to meet the needs of each of the students in their, their session. The, the other example I want to uh, provide briefly is um, our um, LAUSD Charter School, USC Hybrid High, which opened last September with 125 ninth graders. Uh, our goal in opening this school uh, is to create, uh, we hope, at least five high-performing high schools in Los Angeles by 2017, ready to serve over 3,000 students. Our target population is students who have been traditionally underserved by public schools, that is low-income, uh, English language learners, and first-generation uh, college-bound students. Uh, we met our goal in that uh, over 80% of the students in the ninth graders are meet those uh, are, are low income ELL learners. The mission of the school is that 100% of our graduates will be accepted into four year universities with a 90% persistence rate uh, after their freshman year of college. Very ambitious, so we clearly have to understand what's going on uh, uh, and learning. The core pillars of this school and those that will follow uh, are a culture of high expectations for the staff and for students, uh, college prep curriculum and experiences, self-paced learning, relentless pursuit of uh, high-performing uh, team members, and then making this a financially sustainable model as a public school. Teachers, the curriculum, uh, digital tools like tablets and laptops and a learning management system are all organized at Hybrid High uh, into an assessment system that is critical to the attainment of the goal, the mission, and the individual success of each one of the students at Hybrid High. We already have made changes in how the personalized uh, learning plans look and the APEX curriculum um, based on, uh, they've been modified based on the student assessments and the teacher observations this first year. So we, because it's digitized, because we have personalized learning plans, we have not had the wait to find out well beyond when we could have intervened and now, and, and we are modifying as we get evidence about what is working, how it's working. Uh, for example, the learning management system gives immediate results on each student's progress as measured by the NWEA's diagnostic assessments and each student has an individualized dashboard that is updated daily on, on the uh, work they're doing. So we know that broadening the range of student abilities that we can assess is possible with the use of technology. The Board of Commission is right on in this recommendation. With more widespread implementation of digital tools and systems, teachers will wear multiple hats, and I think this is important. Teachers will be instructors, they will be facilitators, but they must become analysts. With all this data being to turned into information, teachers have to have at least those three skill sets. But we in teacher preparation programs will need to learn to use the same tools in our own practice in order for us to prepare our graduates 
to be effective teachers and learners in their own classrooms and schools. And that is just one of the barriers I think to the implementation of the recommendation number six. Thank you.